Hey everybody, Mr. Kaczynski here. We are all the way into skill P15 in the section on transformations and congruence in IXL's eighth grade math. Dealing with side lengths and angle measures of congruent figures. All right, uh, so here's our first pair of congruent figures. We're trying to figure out the measure of angle Q. So that is this measure right here. All right, well, there's a couple ways we can look at this. Um, we, well, first of all, let's talk about like what a congruent figure is, okay? So if I rotate this and then translate it over, it means that it fits on top of it perfectly after that set of transformations, okay? So angle Q, you can see it's, it's that measure right there, which if we move this one back with a translation and a rotation, you can see it's, it's that 78 degree angle there you don't have the ability to rotate shapes and stuff like that on your screen. So let's come up with a strategy for you that'll work though. Um, maybe the fact that this um, angle Q is between the side lengths that are 40 and 50 and 78 is between the side lengths that are 40 and 50. That would definitely do the trick, wouldn't it? I think something like that would work. All right, let's move on to this pair of shapes. These figures are congruent. We're gonna find the measure of GH. All right, again, let's think about it like this. Uh, GH goes from G to H here. All right, we know that angle G is a 115 degree angle. Well, so is angle T. So maybe is GH this length? Um, well, I, I highly doubt that's the case. I mean, that I mean just by looks alone, not that we can solely go by looks, but uh, it doesn't look to be the case, okay? Um, I think it's probably more likely that GH matches and corresponds with TU here, which would then give it a measure of 35 millimeters. These figures are congruent. What's the measure of angle D? All right, well, angle D, this one right here, all right, well, wow. I mean, our measures don't ang uh, match up very well. I do see this 64 degree angle right here. It's gotta be this one, because none of the other two angles are 64 degrees, so this one must be 64 degrees. Maybe that'll help us a little bit, okay? So, um, the angle D is, I mean, it's made up of one of the sides that's 46. I'll change it to blue. How about that? Angle D is a 46 and not a 30. Here's a 46 and not a 30. So it's got to be that angle right there, which is 37 degrees. I might be overthinking this. I know a lot of people will be able to do this just on looks, but I'm trying to give you some other skills that'll work. All right, so these last two examples, actually, IXL's got listed as the tougher ones, but I think if you know the trick, um, they're easier. T-U, T-U. Notice the order I did that in, T and then U. Well, this congruence statement tells us everything we need to know. T-U corresponds to C. A. All right, and if CA is 57 feet, then TU is going to be 57 feet. So even though we don't know anything about that second triangle other than that it's congruent to the first one, um, I don't even need it actually. I mean, as long as you just tell me this congruent statement right here and you give me the measure of CA, that's all I need. I'll show you one more time how that works. ML, all right, so ML is the first two digits or the first two uh, vertices in this first triangle. So UV is what it corresponds to. ML corresponds to UV. UV has a measure of 50. So ML is gonna have a measure of 50, as in 50 millimeters. All right, that's all I got for you. I think you'll do very well on this. Let me know how it goes in the comments as you're working on skill P15 in IXL's eighth grade math. Good luck.